Do you remember the family separation crisis at the U.S. border with parents ripped away from their children and children held in cages? It's hard to forget one of the most horrifying chapters of U.S. history. But you know what's also horrifying? Knowing that your money in the bank probably had something to do with it. That might be hard to believe, but if you bank with a big name bank, even if you don't live in America, your money was probably part of funding family separation. And your big name bank or pension fund is likely using your money to fund a bunch of other despicable things that you would never approve of. I'm going to walk you through the facts. And when I'm done, you'll be able to do three things that can literally change the world and save lives. It all comes down to you taking control of your own hard-earned money in a way you may never have before. But first, hi, I'm Morgan. I've spent 20 years as an activist and investor influencing over $150 billion. Our firm, Candide Group, works with families, foundations, athletes, and influencers who want their money working for justice, funding great companies, doing great things in the world. We've helped move close to $150 million into companies and funds, the majority led by women and people of color. Now, a big part of my job is to understand the ways that money can help or harm us. And that's how I learned that those images you saw of children being taken from their parents and parents longing for their children were likely caused by your money in the bank. How is this possible, you ask? Well, when we put our money in the bank, we often forget or don't even realize that banks actually loan out our money to other businesses. That can mean our money is doing great things like supporting small businesses in our communities or funding renewable energy. But it can also mean terrible things like funding the loans behind global warming, sweatshop labor, or private prisons. Private prisons that make hundreds of dollars a night locking people up and use our money to do it. Without your knowledge or consent, banks can weaponize your dollars to hurt real life people. People like Maria Solis, who was detained while pregnant and separated from her three children. Or US Marine Antonio Medina, whose father caught COVID inside a private prison. So can we do anything about it? We can and we did. People just like you. I'll share more about that story in a moment. But for now, what I want you to understand is that some big banks want you to be an unwitting villain, an unknowing accomplice in their crimes against humanity and against your conscience. But I want you to take steps to be a deliberate hero purposefully taking back control of your money. Your money can still work for you and your financial goals, all while making sure your dollars are used for good. Here are three things that you can do. Number one, find out where your money is spending the night. We can no longer just throw our money into a bank or turn it over to a financial advisor or a pension fund and act like it's not ours anymore. We need to start asking some tough questions. And that shouldn't even seem weird. Because most of us keep close tabs on the things most precious to us, especially at night. Did the dogs come in? Are the kids home? And is my wedding band on? Just like a teenager going out for the evening, we ask questions like, who are you going to be with? Did you remember your keys? Are you really going to wear that, we need to ask the same sort of tough questions about where our money is spending the night. Number two, get ready to move your money. If you don't like where your money is spending the night, if you don't want it being reckless and harming people, just like that teenager, you might need to show it some tough love. It might be time to teach your money some lessons. You can move your money towards investments that align with your values. If we really took back the power of our money, we could end industries that are destroying our communities. 
and instead we can fund businesses that would really make us proud. We can move our money to a community bank or credit union. We can make sure that our pension plan has a social option that isn't just greenwashing, but actually helping the world. And we can make sure the institutions we are a part of are equally taking responsibility for their resources. You may be thinking, sure, but this doesn't really apply to me. I'm not a billionaire. I can barely pay the rent. But here's the thing. Wherever you live in the world, we're all connected to money all the time. We're all accidental billionaires. Your bank may have trillions in assets. You might be a teacher or a city worker with a pension fund or could have an alma mater with a massive endowment. All of these institutions with your help could be part of funding a better future. Number three, be loud and proud of your values. The people who manage your money and the businesses we invest in need to know what you care about and need to be accountable to the people they are impacting every day. It turned out when we spoke up that banks and investors didn't want to be associated with family separation or incarceration more generally. Just as you may not want to make money off of other people's misery, banks learned that it would be bad for their reputation and their conscience as well. So when our coalition got loud, this massive movement building on decades of activism, private prisons lost tens of millions of dollars of bank support. See, what happened is that over the past few years, I was one of hundreds of thousands of activists who came together to defend the right of families to stay together. These activists, mostly moms from all over the country, didn't need to be wealthy and didn't need to be financial experts to be effective. They simply wrote letters, signed petitions, made phone calls, and showed up at over 500 bank branches across the country, sending the clear but simple message that we don't want to make money for our families by separating someone else's family. And you know what? The activism worked. Over the past two years, 10 banks representing the vast majority of private prison financing committed to stop signing harmful contracts. We know when we get loud together that real change can happen. And really, private prisons not only profited from the official family separation policy, but continue to profit every time someone is locked up and automatically separated from their family. We still need to be loud in ending family separation for once and for all. And I truly mean for all. See, family separation wasn't just a short-term aberration. Our systems of mass incarceration and immigrant detention are long-standing family separation policies. This is true in both public and private prisons. Because every time that someone goes to jail, prison, or an immigrant detention center, they are separated from their family. And 74% of the time that someone goes to jail, they haven't even been convicted of a crime. For many folks, their only crime is being too poor to pay bail. We can change this. We can end this cycle. The U.S. locks up more people than any other country on Earth and disproportionately impacts communities of color. By recognizing this link between our money and these horrendous practices, we can help deny prisons and other companies the capital they need to keep profiting from suffering. By pressuring banks and other financial institutions alongside our politicians, we can go beyond eliminating private prisons and immigrant detention centers. Let's end mandatory minimums, cash bail, and other discriminatory practices. Let's replace prisons with more schools, drug treatment, and mental health facilities. Let's stop putting immigrants in cages, create clearer pathways for legal status, and return to treating immigrants with the respect and dignity that they deserve. We can do all of this once we remove the financial incentives that prop up bad policies when companies no longer have a stake in maintaining America's addiction to incarceration, we can get closer to criminal justice and immigration policy that truly serves society. 
And that's why our financial institutions and policymakers need to hear from you and that you care what they are doing with your hard earned dollars. And that's also why this story isn't just about family separation and private prisons and ridiculous lawsuits. It's also about the role of money in climate change, in gentrification, in food apartheid, and in healthcare disparities. It's about all the ways our money intersects with the issues that we care about. And rather waiting to vote every four years, we could vote every day with every dollar that we spend or invest. Find out where your money spends the night and make sure that it's with people who share your dreams for a better world.